Dr. Fauci is back. He's on television because he's telling everybody about how COVID, you need to be precautious. You need to be taking the mitigational variables into consideration. Um, He's not done. We told you this. And there have been people on the right who have been saying to us on this show, why do you even still care? Why do you talk about COVID? And we say, they are not done. And you can see quite obviously, they are not done. They are continuing. They believe that what they did before, at least some contingent of Democrats believe that it had some effect. But this was, uh, this was fascinating. Over on uh, CNN, uh, Michael Smirkanish has a show on Saturdays, I think. It's like a one-day-a-week show. And he is the, uh, I, I think, the least communist of the host over there, of the host over there. I think he's the least communist. Now, that doesn't mean a whole lot, but, you know, to be fair. Um, here he is asking, I want you to really, know, this is kind of a long clip. We want you to hear it, though, because when you are, when Fauci is confronted with the Cochrane study, which is effectively a study of studies, looking at all the randomized control studies, meaning real science studies, You know what they found? Masks did nothing, meaning that statistically speaking, they could prove, including N95 masks, do nothing to stop the spread of COVID. Not just cloth masks, N95 masks too. Here is what happens when little Fouch, who's uh, crawled out from his little, little hobbit lair somewhere, here he is telling everybody, Oh, yeah, no, they still work. There is a perception out there by many, how many, I don't know, that they don't work and that the data concludes that they didn't work in the first go round. Respond to that on masks. Yeah, well, that's not so. I mean, when you're talking about at the population level, that the data are less strong than knowing that if you look on a situation as an individual protecting themselves or protecting them from spreading it, There's no doubt that masks work. Different studies give different percentages of advantage of wearing it, but there's no doubt that the weight of the studies, and there have been many studies, indicate the benefit of wearing masks. I'm going to refer to one of them. You've heard about it before. I heard about it from a number of radio callers. Uh, Brett Stevens in The Times talked about Cochrane. Put that on the screen. The most rigorous and comprehensive analysis of scientific studies conducted on the efficacy of masks for reducing the spread of respiratory illness, including COVID-19, was published last month. Its conclusions, said Tom Jefferson, the Oxford epidemiologist who is the lead author, were unambiguous. There is just no evidence that they, masks, make any difference he told the journalist Mayan Damasi, full stop. But wait, hold on. What about the N95 masks as opposed to the lower quality? Surgical or cloth masks makes no difference. None of it, he said. Well, what about the studies that initially persuaded policymakers to impose mask mandates? They were convinced by non-randomized studies, flawed observational studies. How do we get beyond that finding of that particular review? Yeah, but there are other studies, Michael, that show at an individual level for individual. When you're talking about the effect on the epidemic or the pandemic as a whole, the data are less strong. But when you talk about as an individual basis of someone protecting themselves or protecting themselves from spreading it to others, there's no doubt that there are many studies that show that there is an advantage. When you took at the broad population level, like the Cochrane study, the data are less firm with regard to the effect on the overall pandemic. You remember that scene in Jurassic Park where he says that's a load of, and then look at the yeah. the triceratops dung that has heaped up like 10 feet high? That is what Fauci just did there. I mean, individual, it, Clay, it doesn't work based on the numbers with millions and millions of people <laughs> at all, but it yes. works on an individual basis. I don't know if Fauci is such a moron or so dishonest based on what he's saying here. I could be convinced of either. So many funny. So first of all, when you said Jurassic Park, I thought the line you were going to go with was science will find a way. Uh, and, and that's a famous line for those of you who watched it um, uh, about the, I think it's the life will find a way. life will find. I thought it was science will find a way. But yeah, I think you're right. You I think it's like Crichton lines out on me here. Go ahead. Uh, so. 
this this is so great. And I want to reiterate for our audience, for two plus years, we have asked Fauci to be on this show, and he has said he's too busy to come His on the show. His cell phone reception has been bad like Pence's for two years. Which is fine, as I said in response to that, because Buck and I have to wash our hair uh, as well. So it's very, t- very time consuming for us as well. But this shouldn't have taken. We're now in the fourth fall winter of COVID. That's crazy to think about. I know for many of you out there, this is going to be the fourth year of us going through a fall winter with COVID. And Fauci is a liar. And Fauci should be in prison for the lies that he, have to- that he has told that continue to come out. But for it to take this long, for him to be directly confronted on live television, first of all, I give credit to Mike- Michael Smirkonish because I think it is important if you want journalists to actually hold people in positions of power accountable, this is what should happen. Fauci should have to answer for the Cochrane Review, and he should, when you listen to that, uh, that response, Buck, it doesn't work for millions of people, but it works on an individual level, doesn't ever make any sense in the first place. Well, th- this is a bit like saying my, my security blanket that I cover, that I carry with me, it doesn't work if millions of people hold it in tight, but for me, it keeps the monsters away. I mean, this is an absurd quasi-religious belief at this point. That something could, uh, think about if you said this for the vaccine. We did a vaccine trial. I mean, the case of masks it was basically with 360 million Americans, but we did a vaccine trial with 10 million people and could show no efficacy whatsoever, zero statistically from every single trial that that vaccine helped those 10 million people. This is theoretical, but you just get, you guys get what I'm saying. And then you turn around and said, yeah, but we know the vaccine offers individual protection. People would legitimately think, that you were an imbecile because that is so stupid that it's not even wrong. It's so stupid that it's like a cry for help. That is what the chief high priest of COVIDian measures just said on CNN. It is impossible. Dumber answer than that. Yeah. And, and also Buck, I think this is part and parcel of what I would say the dumbing down of America in this way. You tell me if you think I'm wrong. I actually trust scientists and experts more if they admit when they're wrong. Absolutely. And I tell that about pundits, too. That's why I'll admit when I'm wrong here. A hundred percent. And we try, especially we get facts wrong. We get, look, I did gambling for four years daily. You want to talk about getting things wrong all the time. You have to. That's why one reason, like, I'm going to say exactly what I think. Sometimes it's going to be right. Sometimes it's going to be wrong. And you guys, over time, can decide whether you trust the authenticity of those opinions. But so what when Biden think, is the nominee and Clay has to buy me the most <laughs> expensive steak in the history of red meat, uh, it'll be fine. So here is where I think that they miscalculated to such an extent, Buck. If Fauci came out and said, yeah, we got it wrong on masks, and yeah, the data on the COVID shot uh, has been proven to be wrong as well. It hasn't protected you. I would still be furious at him because he's lied for years. What has Fauci admitted that they've gotten wrong? And and this is just so frustrating because I think it speaks to there is a form of absolutism that is, I think, running rampant in America. And what it requires is that even if facts change or even if data is shifting, you have to stay committed to whatever you said publicly in the first place, or you're worried that your legitimacy is going to be questioned. I actually think it's the opposite. I think there is such a desperate demand for the truth out there that people would have years ago, Buck, if Fauci had come out years ago when the data became clear and he had said, hey, you know what, there's no reason to wear masks. You made a good point years ago when we started on this show. Fauci has never, ever said you're doing too much. Yep. He's never, Buck, and, and, I, and you go back and look at everything that he said. He never said, hey, you know what? Six-year-olds don't need to be sitting in socially distanced, outdoor, sub-freezing temperature, eating their peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. We're not protecting mm-hmm. them by doing that. Not once has he ever said this is too much. And that's why I have contempt for him. Yes. Because he's making proclamations under the, the 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 veil from behind the the false white lab coat of science here he's making these proclamations that have 
real hurtful uh, outcomes for people. He is making people anxious, uncomfortable, sick, getting them fired, creating, you know, problems within families. There are consequences to the lies that he continues to propagate. If he were a decent human being, never mind, you know, you're talking about it, Clay, from the perspective of just intellectual honesty. Yes. But there's also a decency component to this too, right? It, he should admit he's wrong because that's what honest, smart people do. But also, there are still people out there who live in terror of their masks slipping down at the yes. airport and, and they're going to get COVID. Fauci could almost like lay a hand on their forehead and say, I shall make you free now of this fear, but he won't do it. And, you know, the other thing I said, he's never, which is true, thank you for reminding me, that he's never dialed it back ever. He's never said to people, you know what, you're doing too much. He, he also has never said anything that upsets the Rachel Maddow audience, that, you know, that, that sends the, the CNN audience into a moment of, oh, my gosh, right? He won't say anything that upsets hardcore Democrats. Why is that, everybody? How is that possible, that he's gotten so much wrong, but he's never said anything that has upset because his political constituency, but that's what it is. He has a political constituency. Also, at this point, as we enter the fourth year, it takes a lot to get me really angry. Buck, when I'm at the airport and I see a parent masking a two-year-old, I have I'm contempt leg- for it. I'm with I you. am legitimately angry at that parent, and I feel so sorry for that kid in the same way that I think it's child abuse. In the same way, if I saw a parent berating a child in uh, in a way that would make you uncomfortable in public to see or in private to see, uh, I I look at it and I think, what hell must that kid be going through? Because it's one thing if you're a parent and you are psychologically unstable and you have committed yourself, you'll see bucks sometimes these people still get on and they're like, I'm wearing a face shield and four N95s and like basically medical scrubs so that I'm sitting on an airplane. I remember when the airplane uh, executives, finally, the, the, the airline executives finally got fed up and they went on and they were like, look, the filtration systems on air, uh, airplanes are actually far more cleanly than the average air that you would breathe in a regular uh, in a regular place. And they kind of went off on it, the idea that you had to wear masks. And we saw certainly as the mask mandates were removed and everybody yanked them off. But if you're an adult and you want to engage in delusional, fanciful thinking because your brain is broken because of the Fauci's of the world and COVID, you have that right. I think you're an imbecile. But to make kids, and for Fauci still to not come out and say, yeah, Young children get zero benefit and actually a huge detriment when it comes to learning how to speak because you learn how to speak by seeing adult lips. These kids are facing massive structural deficiencies and gaining no benefit. It's child abuse. And it's Fauci's cowardice is cruel. And that's what, and it's Fauci, it's Walensky, it's all these different doctors. Their cowardice is a cruelty to people who do not have the knowledge and the courage to come to the obvious conclusion here, which is that all of this lockdown, social distancing, masking was a complete zero in terms of benefit and massive costs in terms of the downside. We were always led to believe that there were basically no downsides and tremendous benefit. It is actually the reverse of that. It is tremendous downside with no benefit. And I, I think that there's just a recognition at this point, or there's a belief at this point, Clay, among uh, some of these individuals that they won't have any credibility if they actually say what is true. So they, would, they will go to the very end clinging to these lies. Kind of what Fauci did, muttering out of the side of their mouths, but there are other studies. The Cochrane study is the most definitive, broad, wide-reaching look at data by the most esteemed organization that does this. And they looked at this and they said, there's no benefit. N95 or cloth. And yet if you were to go over to CNN or MSNBC or whatever, you know what happened if you walk in that green room and people are wearing masks? You said, guys, what are you doing? They think that you are crazy. And remember Fauci, in addition to getting attacked finally on CNN, 
the New York Times, he admitted, I think I got the quote right, right, that um, that there was only like at best a 10 percent maybe marginal benefit. So he's already circled himself into this tiny corner of masking might have 10 percent benefit. And what they're now starting to say is, well, it doesn't have any harm, so there's no harm in doing it. But that's the exact yeah. opposite of what we were told. You're also only going to get that strain of COVID once. This No one ever thought about this really in this process of, of mask mandates. A 10% reduction over what period of time? Because if you have any real familiarity with how the numbers work and how the stats play out, even if you had a 10% reduction in, let's say, one area of the country with a mask mandate for a month or two, if everyone in that area is going to get COVID over the next 12 months, it doesn't matter. You know what I Correct. mean? Correct. It, it never made any sense. It's not a reduction as in protection from the virus that lasts. It is a temporary reduction, and it's not even that. This is why 15 days to stop the spread never made any sense if you actually analyzed it. All they were trying to do was prolong how long people got COVID to try to keep hospitals from being uh, having a lot of people to cover, which actually just prolonged the whole process. Like, th and that's I'll, all it did. I'll just throw this out there. It was even before Clay and I were working together. We were two of the most, you go back and check the record, publicly on the record, two of the most hardcore guys in the media against all this madness from the beginning, Clay Travis and Buck Sexton. Facts.